It's the Daily Dog. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the Daily Dog. Thanks for being with me today on a Wednesday that we are making another World Wednesday. And what a World Wednesday it's going to be because we're going south of the equator back to Brazil to our friend Yamandu Costa, the absolutely brilliant composer and guitarist. I am happy that you are here because a couple of months ago, I first listened to music by Yamandu here on the channel. In fact, it was in August that we listened to three of his tunes and the response has been quite overwhelming. A bunch of y'all have liked the video. I like the music and so I am ready to get back to music from Yamandu Costa and I am happy that you are with me. So special thanks again goes to Marcos, uh, our friend over on the Discord, for providing some, some translations and a little bit of research to help me out here. Thank you, Marcos. So Yamandu Costa, he has built quite a discography uh, and just breadth of, of artistic output over the past 20, 22 years. And uh, he has more than 20 studio albums. And uh, from what I saw before, he has a quite uh, a, um, a special flair for uh, performing on his instrument. His preferred instrument is this Brazilian seven string guitar. And it sounds unbelievable. So, so let's dive into it, y'all. I'm going to do three more tunes from Yamandu today. Up first is going to be Choro Loco which means crazy shoro. And a shoro or a shorinho was uh, something that was invented in Rio uh, in the second half of the 19th century. Uh, there were some European styles and dance forms that became very present in Brazil during that time, uh, such as the polka, uh, the waltz, uh, and these were performed in the saloons of the elites. However, uh, the popular musicians took it to the streets, of course, and they reinvented it and with, with the guitar, with the flute, well, with some percussion instruments like the drums and, and tambourine. And so a shoro is a mixture of, uh, of these European styles along with the uh, Brazilian and African-influenced rhythms and sounds. Uh, so Yamandu says that he moved to Rio and lived there for about 20 years so that he could be exposed to this genre and play with professional artists uh, in this style uh, since he grew up in the south of Brazil, far from Rio. Uh, from the official video that we're going to look at, uh, Yamandu says that this Choro uh, begins, or sorry, brings elements from both tradition and the vanguard, which was exactly uh, the, uh, the intention, I think with something like this. So let's take a look at Shoro Loco. It says, I mean, Loco is crazy. So uh, let's, let's see what kind of craziness that we can get into with Yamandu Costa here. Off we go. Mm. Gosh, that's a low string for a guitar. the artwork behind it. Yeah. Goes up a half step. Sounds like flat too. Sounds like he got back to A for a second, but he's, he's having fun with it. Up a half step again. So he's using combinations of two five ones and then just some chromatic half step shifts. back in A.
it's just an intoxicating sound, y'all. And he's all over the fretboard on this. Funky, how do you get there? I think. Blow that notice, and he and he stayed in A for the whole time. Woo! How about that? I need to almost redo my hair <laughs> and get these repositioned for the next one. Sure, uh, crazy it was, wasn't it? It, it? it moved around all over the place. Uh, wow, that was awesome. Uh, I want to move on to another one, though. This one is called Alpargata. It's A-L-P-A-R-G-A-T-A, -A -A, Alpargata. And this is one that, that Marcos suggested. And the title refers to a type of shoe, a simple shoe like a sandal. And uh, so Yamandu typically wears shoes like this, apparently, uh, in his concerts. And so from the official video, a translation that I have uh, says that the Alpargata came to me. So this is Yamandu talking, I believe. Uh, Alpargata came to me when I visited the, oh my goodness, uh, Fuerteventura Island in the Canaries. Uh, while waiting to play in a concert, I started to have fun with a milonga. Uh, which is a musical style typical from the southern part of South America, Uruguay, uh, Argentina, and southern uh, Brazil. And it was something that reminded me of the guitar I heard as a child, more like a Uruguayan milonga. So I'm looking forward to hearing this one. This is from uh, a different part of the continent. So let's see what Alpargata is all about. Off we go. He's still an A, but this one's major. Right. I love his flair for playing and his facial expressions. Music like this, really well played acoustic guitar, can soothe my soul for hours, y'all, especially when it's played this well. personality of these always 
breaks through, right? That was a little five of five to five to five, but he's still in A. treasure to watch play, my friend. You make me feel like I'm in the room with you. you want to get up and dance does it not wonderful 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 Whew. i love it i love it this stuff just just thrills me to no end i can barely keep up uh, quite honestly <laughs> but i'm enjoying the challenge so the last one that i want to include uh today and share with all of you is a song that is called la uh, cathedral uh the cathedral and this is a piece uh that is not an original by Yamandu. This is by the Paraguayan guitarist and composer Augustin uh, Badios, who uh, was active in the early part of the uh, 20th century, uh, who became uh, pretty famous for his works and for his performances and for being among the first to do uh, commercially recorded classical uh, guitar. Uh, on a gramophone discs. So this piece, La Catedral, is his masterpiece, or one of his masterpieces, and it is said to be influenced by Johann Sebastian Bach, so I'm looking forward to seeing some of uh, so that, and it is scored as Allegro Solemn. So Allegro meaning fast, Solemn, S-O-L-E-M-N-E, -E, meaning understated, right? So it's going to be quick, but it may have a sereneness to it. So I'll be curious to see what uh, what happens here. In this particular video, Yamandu is joined by his wife, Elodie, and, uh, and she plays the original score while Yamandu is going to do some improvisation over the top of it with a second guitar. So we've got two players this time, and I'm looking forward to La Cathedral, uh, performed by Yamandu and his wife, Elodie. Here we go. To the relative major. Then back to minor, B minor. That strikes of Bach to me. Where you start in a minor key, but like by the time you get to your first real cadence, you're in the major key, the relative major. Then all bets are off. Yeah, major key, relative major, D major. minor 
five. Ah, the circle of fifth progression. Yeah. All right, and they put back in cadence. Lovely. Playing that together. It's amazing. Again to cadence in B. They move the F sharp to a G, then they go to an A chord, and that gets them to D. Sorry. No! Do that again. Tom, ba, tom. That's a German augmented sixth chord. Tell me it's not inspired by Bach. Woo! Incredible. Incredible guitar playing. Man, makes me want to pick one up and try to play. Almost. Uh, I'm intimidated by their uh, by their ability. Woo! Uh, but wow, isn't that seven string guitar just just wonderful to listen to? You've got so much low end uh, with that extra string down there. Um, I I think I read or I saw in a video about him that that seventh string is actually kind of taken from the seventh of 10 strings on a 10 string guitar or a 12 string guitar or something like that to get it to actually be the right tension and length and, and all that it needs to be instead of, you know, trying to finagle or make a, a another six, you know, string from a six string guitar work that low. Um, huh. You know, they, we say it's influenced by, by Bach a little bit. When I said the German augmented six chord, what I mean, what I hear there, what I hear is if, if the bass is in, or if the piece is in B minor, which is where they were, right? The bass is going to go down by um, by step all the way to its five. It's it's F sharp. So a half step above F sharp is a G, and then a half step below F sharp is an E sharp, and it's it's inharmonically an F. But what I hear is that G against an F, that seventh resolving outward to an F sharp on this end and an F sharp on that end. And, and it lands on the dominant, which gets us back to B minor. And when you have that G and that F and it sounds like a dominant seventh chord, and then it re and those those notes on the ends resolve outward, that's the the click to me that, oh, that was a German augmented sixth chord. It's it's a predominant chromatic chord. That's, that's a pretty special little chord. Woo! I... I, I barely caught, <laughs> I have to listen again. I barely caught a whole bunch of that. But um, when we well, another thing, when we think about being inspired by Bach or by Western classical music, you've got all those arpeggios. There were circle of fifths uh, progressions. You've got pretty fast um, scale patterns that can connect uh, these uh, progressions of, of harmonies as they go. And boy, they played it. Did they not? That was incredible to watch them play. Uh, together. Uh, this is so much fun. I wish I had a couple more, but I think I'm going to call it a day. What a world Wednesday, right? We've got, we started with the Shoro, 
which of course is a Brazilian style of, of music. And then with the uh, Alpargata, that's from the southern part, uh, the Uruguayan or Argentinian uh, milonga, you know, sort of a predecessor to the tango. And then we end with this uh, composition by uh, a composer from Paraguay who was influenced by Bach and interpreted by Brazilian guitarists. I mean, come on. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun to, uh, to listen to these uh, players from around the world and see what sounds they're making, what influences they draw on, what kind of fusion and combinations of influences that they're putting in to their performances. It is not only a treasure to hear this, but to watch, to watch him play. And, and interact with his music. It just makes me feel better, puts me in a better mood. So I hope that you are also in a better mood after hearing all of that music from Yamandu Costa. Thanks again to our friend Marcos in Brazil for uh, for helping us get to the right tunes by Yamandu. And thanks to all of you for your support and for watching today. Thanks, y'all. We'll see you next time on another edition of The Daily Doug.